What's up, everybody? Happy Tuesday. Hope all you're having a great day so far. Um, getting into this episode of Days, first off, I want to say congrats to everybody at Days that won an award. They pretty much swept the board at the daytime Emmys. So, again, congratulations. Um, first of all, <laughs> this whole DID storyline, I'm over it. They need to come up with a new storyline. I'm over it. Um, the district attorney is a complete moron. Like, why is Hope and the DA sitting there negotiating a deal with an alter ego? Like, you're talking to a person that's not even a real person, and you're negotiating terms and stuff like that. Here's the thing. I would have pretended like I was negotiating if I was them. Hopefully, they did pretend because I'm like, I wouldn't have agreed to nothing. I mean, they agreed to the phone call and stuff like that between Gabby Gell and Stefan. You know, they agreed to the phone call, which is cool. But anything else like immunity and anything else, I wouldn't agree to shit. I would have pretended like I agreed just so I could get the information on Marlena, Kate, and Vivian. But other than that, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have agreed to shit. Because it's like you're negotiating with an alter ego, so it's not even legal. Um, I don't blame Jennifer for going to fuck off on Stefan. Because I would have went off on his ass too. Because basically everything he did to um, Abigail was rape. He talking about, he tried to sit there and tell Jennifer it was consensual. It's not consensual because you were having sex with a person that was not real. And not in her right state of mind. So, therefore, it's rape. It's not consensual when the person is not even a real person. You had sex with an alter ego. It's not real. So, therefore, the real person did not consent and would never consent. So, therefore, it's rape. Dumbass. We all know he probably not going to go to prison. We know that. You know what I'm saying? He ain't going to jail for it, but it's rape. Call it what it is. Um... So, yeah, I don't blame Jennifer for going off on him. Like, he definitely is a piece of crap. He took advantage of that girl in a weakened state. Like, this dude fell in love with an altar. <laughs> Imagine that, just falling in love with somebody that's not even real. <laughs> that's some sick stuff. Like, I'm just saying, that is so sick, to fall in love with something that's not real. Like, that's... And talk about it like it's so real. Oh, I love Gabby. Her name is not Gabby, first of all. <laughs> Like, Stefan is definitely, ugh, like, seriously. I'm going to tell you right now, I, 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 listen, I'm a fan of Tyler, um, I'm a fan of Tyler Christopher, but I had high hopes for the Stefan Demira character, because I knew Stefan could never take the place of Stefano, you know what I'm saying, because Joe Mascalo was that dude, like, you could never take the place of Joe as Stefano Demira, you can never replace Stefano. But I was hoping that Stefan would have been somewhat like Stefano. You know what I'm saying? Because I felt like ever since Stefano died, the Demira family done fell off. You know, because Chad, he was trying to be goody-goody. Andre, they tried to domesticate him. So there was no fear in the Demira family. You know what I'm saying? Like, people no longer feared them. They were no longer the top family. And they had that power because of people like Stefano and EJ, you know, and the way Andre used to act. So once they started domesticating Andre and EJ's gone, Stefano's gone, that whole family just fell apart. You know, we need that family to have a resurgence. You know what I'm saying? For somebody to be like Stefano and take the lead and do damage in that town. And that's what Stefano was good at. So without Stefano, I thought Stefan would come in and fill that role. You know, be the powerful patriarch of that family. You know what I'm saying? Because like I said, Chad was too goody-goody. Now Andre's gone, so we need somebody to step up. And Stefan, I was hoping, was that dude. You know, Steve and all them felt like Stefan was trying to take off where, you know, pick up where Stefano left off as far as tormenting people and stuff like that. Because um, he does have a sick obsession with Abigail, just like Stefano had an obsession with Marlena. You know, Marlena was always his queen of the night. Um... So, I think they're sticking to that similarity, but it's in a sicker way with Stefan, though. Like, the whole rape thing of an altar and all that, like, that's way sicker. Um, I feel bad for Steve, though. You know, going through this blindness and stuff like that. You know, it's hard. Like, I can never imagine myself losing my sight. You know what I'm saying? I can't imagine how I would get around without my vision. 
You know what I'm saying? And then you would pretty much have to lean on everybody to do things that you can't do for yourself without your vision. You know what I'm saying? And I do think in real life, I do feel like people do take everything for granted that they have. And that's including body parts and stuff like that. You know, your eyesight, your hearing. People take a lot of that stuff for granted. And it's people out here that really can't, you know, that don't have their eyesight, that don't have their hearing, that don't even have their legs. Some people that don't even have arms because they had to have them amputated or whatever the case may be because of a disease that they were born with. So a lot of people do take things for granted. You know what I'm saying? When you see storylines like this where people go through blindness or you even see somebody in real life that's blind, it puts things in perspective for you. You know what I'm saying? To appreciate what you got. You know what I'm saying? And, and you know, like I said, I feel bad for Steve, you know, to even be going through that stuff, you know? And that's the reason why he's still trying to act so tough and stuff like that, because he doesn't want to be a burden to Kayla. But Kayla wants him to be a burden. You know, that's her husband. You know, she wants him to lean on her, just like she always leaned on him when times were tough with her. You know, that's what marriage is. You know, that's what family is. You know, you're supposed to lean on each other when shit get hard. So that's what she's trying to tell Steve to do. You know, lean on her. You know, be her. You know, she wants to be his rock, just like he's her rock. You know, and I and I love that. I love that relationship between Steve and Kayla. And that's why I love the vets on these shows, because the vets have been around so long and they got so much love for each other. It's like when you see that on camera, it makes it, it makes you see why they are who they are and why they are veterans of this genre because of that realness that they come off in scenes it's maturity it's none of that childish shit that you see with sierra and the younger generation you know what i'm saying with the older people they did their childish shit years ago so they're more mature now than they were 30 years ago because trust me steve and kayla wasn't always mature they used to have a childish shit too back in the day they used to be childish and petty and that's any i think that's like a lot of generations though you know when you're young you're you're petty you're childish but when you get older, though, you you mature, you know, you mature a lot more. And that's what I love about these older relationships. Um, so anyway, this whole, this, it's just this whole damn DID situation, like, it, it's becoming a hot ass mess. Like, I'm not, like I said, I'm not a big fan of the whole DID storyline because I've seen it so many times. You know, Ron Carlovati always does DID storylines on whatever show he goes on. So I'm accustomed to seeing it. And I knew I was going to get a DID story with him coming on the show. I knew it. I was like, watch, he's going to do a DID. And of course he did. Um, I'm just not a fan of it, though, because I've just seen it too much. So I'm like, I'm ready for something different with him. You know what I'm saying? The other storylines he's doing, I like. It's just this old DID joint. It's like, I'm over it. Kate, Marlena, and Vivian. I could never... I'm just saying, I could fucking never. Let me tell you something. With Vivian, I can never be trapped in no room with her. <laughs> I'm just saying, I'd be ready to choke her. <laughs> like, just being in a room with her. Like, And then they were in that room for days, like, with no bathroom, no food, no change of clothes, no water. I'm like, I know they stink. <laughs> I know they stink. They hungry. I'm surprised they didn't urinate on they self. <laughs> Like, how are y'all just in this room with nothing except a bottle of champagne? <laughs> and they was up in there getting toasted. <laughs> I would have been too, though. If I'm trapped in a room and I ain't got nothing but a bottle of alcohol, fuck it, I'm drinking. If I'm going to die, I'm going to die drunk. <laughs> fuck it. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's how I would be. Like, if I'm in a, in a room and I'm got liquor, I'm I'm going out with a bang. I'm going to be drunk. I'm going to be lit tea. I'm just saying, like, ain't no way. I'm going to be up in there sober, especially with somebody I don't like who's very annoying and their voice is annoying. So, yeah, I, I have to be drunk. Um, So Vivian started telling Kate how Andre betrayed her, how him, how Andre and Vivian were working together for a year trying to sabotage Demira so that way they could take over and reap the financial benefits. Of course, Kate didn't want to believe her, but it is the truth. Andre was working with Vivian for a time. Um, but of course, Kate didn't want to believe it. I truly believe Andre did love Kate. And you could see that. Like, Andre grown, he grew to love Kate. You know, and I think he felt guilty about lying to her and he felt guilty about betraying her. But at the end of the day, was Andre going to stop trying to do it? No. 
He he was about, Andre was about his money. Andre ain't give a fuck. He loved Kate, but he loved money just as much. <laughs> he loved money and power just as much as he loved Kate. So as much as he felt guilt for doing what he was doing, he was gonna keep doing it because that's just how it was. So Vivian finally passed out. I said hallelujah. I know they was kind of happy when Vivian passed the fuck out because I know I would have been because she finally could shut up. <laughs> Because Vivian is so aggravating. I love Vivian, but she's annoying. I could never be, like I said, trapped in a room with that chick. Ever. Never, 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 never. Um, so John and Paul, you know, they finally get the location of where Marlena and the rest of them are. By the time they got there, though, everybody was knocked the fuck out. By the time they got there, because I'm like, they went days without food. You know, they were starving, looking for something to eat. They were going, they were losing air. Like, that's enough to make anybody pass the hell out. I know I would. So, anyway, this was a pretty decent episode. So, hit the comment section. Let me know what y'all thought about this episode. And I will see y'all all later. Peace.